Today I'm gonna show you how to roast the perfect turkey, super flavorful and so juicy. I mean, come over here, check this out. Brining is the first step in flavor development. Thanks to a good brine recipe, gone are the days of dry, flavorless turkey. It is yet another reason to celebrate. Place a large pot over medium-high heat, pour in eight cups of water, two cups of apple cider vinegar, and two cups of kosher salt. I know it looks like a lot of salt, but it's going to season that bird, allow it to absorb that brine, and retain its moisture when cooking. Now whisk until the salt has completely dissolved. By the time this is ready, the mixture is gonna be warm, which is perfect because we don't want the brine to be hot. Turn up the heat. Now in a really large container, pour in one gallon plus eight cups of really cold water. This is a 22 quart, but you can also use a really large pot. Follow that with the warm salt solution. Cut two limes in half, and before you add them into the brine, give them a nice squeeze. We are using everything, so add the peel in there as well. Do the same thing with five juicy oranges. Just quarter them for smaller pieces. Now roughly dice a red onion, or you could even use a white one if you like. Smash and peel 12 garlic cloves and also sprinkle in there one tablespoon of Mexican dry oregano. In a molcajete, combine one tablespoon of black peppercorns, two teaspoons of whole allspice, and one teaspoon of cumin seeds. Roughly crack them with a the pestle to release those essential oils. Using a molcajete does a wonderful job. Pour into the container along with a small bunch of fresh thyme, fresh oregano, and four bay leaves. The brine should be cool in temperature. If not, you can add a few cups of ice to help with that, but this brine is good to go. Just stir everything to make sure it is well combined. Time to present that sexy turkey. It is 12 pounds of goodness. Remove the giblets from the cavity, the excess skin from the neck area, and also check for feathers because you want them in your pillows, not the turkey. Carefully submerge it into the brine Having a large container is key here to make sure that bird is fully covered. Add a couple of plates in there to weigh it down. Now cover it with plastic wrap if you don't have a lid. Take it over to the fridge and allow it to brine for 12 to 24 hours. I took it out of the fridge and got rid of that brine because we're not gonna use it anymore and just give that turkey a rinse under cold water. Make sure you get inside that cavity as well. Transfer it onto a sheet pan that's been lined with paper towels to absorb some of that water. Using a few paper towels, pat the entire bird dry, including that cavity. It's a step into the right direction for a great browning. And here we are. This turkey has to stay out at room temperature for about an hour, that way it's not so cold when we roast it. Meanwhile, let's make that flavored butter. In a bowl, combine 12 ounces of softened room temperature unsalted butter, two tablespoons of avocado oil, 10 garlic cloves pressed or minced, one and a half tablespoons of ground onion, one and a half teaspoons of ground cumin, one tablespoon of Mexican dry oregano, two teaspoons of ground ancho, one tablespoon of ground guajillo, and one tablespoon of smoked paprika. Zest one orange and one lime. Now mix to combine. It is very important for the butter to be soft because it's just gonna come together beautifully. Finally, squeeze in half a cup of orange juice and a quarter cup of lime juice. Carefully mix it in. You can use a spatula or a whisk. It may start to look broken, but that's okay. Just keep mixing it and it's gonna come together like a beautiful fluffy puzzle. You may have to alternate between a whisk and a spatula and put some muscle in there. You know what could be easier? Using a stand mixer as well, so use it. Feel free to do so. Back to the turkey, give it a quick pat dry. Stuff the cavity with one orange, one lime, and just cut them into small pieces as well as half a white onion. Take a full head of garlic, slice that end off, stuff it in there as well, and do a bunch of fresh oregano and fresh thyme. If it doesn't all fit inside the cavity, don't worry about it, just add it inside the roasting tray. Loosen the skin on the entire breast area by carefully sliding your fingers underneath and be very careful not to break the skin. 
Take that flavored butter and tuck it right underneath the skin. Massage it with your fingers in order to spread it all around. And I find that a spoon is very useful for this step. Just be careful again with that skin. We are trussing that turkey. Take a very long piece of kitchen twine, go under the tail, then around the legs, cross it, go around the breast until you reach the neck area and give it a good double knot. Just ensure everything is nice and tight. Lay it over the rack already inside that roasting pan. I'll link this pan down in the description area. Don't forget to tuck both of the wings. Rub the remainder of the butter over the breast, thighs, wings. For a bigger bird, you might use all of that butter. For a smaller one, you may have some leftover. Finally, pour in six cups of low sodium chicken broth to the bottom of the roasting pan. We're almost there. This is definitely a labor of love, but it's gonna be so good and flavorful. Oven is preheated to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. Place it inside the oven on the second bottom rack. That way it doesn't brown too fast. And let it roast for 30 minutes to get that browning started. I'm a strong woman. <laughs> We're gonna bring the temperature down to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. We have a nice browning going on. I'm just gonna baste it. Get some of that fat from the bottom of the pan. If you're using a leave-in thermometer, make sure to stick it in the thickest part of the breast. Cover with about five to six pieces of banana leaves. They're gonna trap that steam and release their natural flavors, which is mild, but a great addition. Be very careful because that roasting pan is really hot. Do a layer of aluminum foil to make sure everything is nice and enclosed. Continue to roast it until the internal temperature reaches 150 degrees Fahrenheit. It's gonna take about two hours. With the help of Nelson, we got it out of the oven. We're gonna remove the foil and the leaves. Be careful because there is steam trapped inside. Take this opportunity to baste it and things are about to get spectacular because it's going back in the oven one final time until the thickest part of the breast reaches 165 degrees Fahrenheit. To get that gorgeous golden brown color on top, feel free to brush some of that butter at the bottom of the roasting pan. It's really gonna give you that crispy, gorgeous looking skin that we all love about turkey. Just try not to open the oven too much because the temperature will drop and it's gonna take longer for the turkey to cook. We don't want that. On the other hand, if the skin is browning too fast but the turkey is not done yet, feel free to place a piece of aluminum foil right over the breast. Oh, you are not ready for this. Ooh. Thank you. Nelson's closing the oven for us. Are you ready? I hope you are. Oh, ho, ho. I don't know. I'm done. The time I spent on every single detail paid off. Look at that. Wow. Allow it to rest for at least 30 minutes or up to an hour. The longer it sits, the better because there's a lot of heat trapped in here. And if you cut into it right now, all of those juices are gonna run out and your work is gonna go to waste. So let's wait. Take a piece of aluminum foil and lightly cover it. I'll see you in a bit. Show this beautiful turkey off. Here's an idea. I think it looks gorgeous. Line the platter with a few banana leaves, surrounded with orange and lime wedges, a few fresh herbs, which you can use oregano in thyme, and pomegranate for a pop of color. Let's dig right into it. Nelson and I are mainly dark meat lovers, but this is the perfect occasion to dig into the breast area so I can show you just how juicy it is. And the flavor all around is amazing. And I eat one some of the skin. I want some of that turkey. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Wow. Citrusy, packed with flavor. I love how the brine adds just the right amount of salt. It's, it's not dry. Yeah. So juicy. Nice and juicy. You outdid yourself on this one. It is incredible. You really have to try it at home. 
and know that the full printable recipe is going to be available on villacocina.com. All right, everyone. I hope you really enjoyed this recipe. Until the next one. Bye. <laughs> We're going to go enjoy these legs now. They look so good.